Thank you on an overview of the Vision Rehab. I'm going to cover some of the aspects of my lecture contribution to the certification. I highly recommend that you uh, take part in this certification because it's going to help you because I'm just going to tell you, vision is overlooked. I know that is not intentionally a pun, but it is overlooked. Some children and adults have had eye surgeries to align the eyes. Many times it's a spastic or a low tone eye muscle. And the um, surgeries have to be done again and again. So how can it be overlooked? And I'm going to have to scoot up to even see my own slides. I'm sorry, people. But it's dependent on cranial nerves. Cranial nerves innervate the eye muscles the uh, optic nerve is uh, cranial nerve too. So you want to always consider the nervous system when you're looking at vision and changing how well a person can see, how much they can process in their occipital lobe. It also references emotion, what they hear, they may be moving. And all of this interplay and this sensory processing is going to make the eyes move automatically. If they have a lot of primitive reflexes, they may have it also demonstrated in the position of their eyes or a different tone in their face. Now, how do you diagnose vision challenges? There's a lot of children that have autism now, I mean, we know that, or they're on the autism spectrum. They may not sustain gaze on some uh, items. And we present in these, these courses uh, available to you how you can get more attention, how they can have more recognition of what they see, and how you can gauge their facial features, their tone, if a cheek is high, if their mouth is uh, asymmetrical or their jaw, it can even, uh, tone can affect how they chew. But windows into the nervous system is vision. Vision can help teach them. It can help uh, retrain some skills or teach them some new skills. The, uh, patients that we work with. You can use these skills on children. You can use these skills on adolescents or adults. It is applicable to any age uh, that you wish to work with. Now, this is one of my patients that was anoxic for about 15 minutes uh, is his writing on the left when I first started treating him. And after about eight months, he was able to do circle, triangle, square, which is some of the activities I try to do because most of the letters in the English language are based on curves or straight lines. And he was able to write his name. The You'll learn signs and symptoms of vision challenges or if their vagus nerve is disrupted or if they're in fight or flight, how to calm them so that you can move to other activities. The patient only learns when they are calm. They do not learn when they're in fight or flight. But the eyes give you an idea if they are in fight or flight or if they are anxious so please look at their eyes, see their pupil size is going to change when they go into a anxious uh, area of not being able to pay attention. They may be flighty. They may be resistant to touch. If they can't see you or see what's touching them, they can also misinterpret that information. So increasing vision, visual acuity, the eye muscles, around the eyeball, help shape the eyeball. And it's kind of like a boiled egg. So it's kind of squishy and bouncy and it's fluid filled with vitreous humor. When you strengthen the eye muscles, you can reshape where it, the focus point is so that it decreases the nearsightedness and the farsightedness. The effects of visual challenges, you 
will find children that don't seem to focus on the parent's face uh, when they're an infant. And this is one of the clues that they may have cortical vision impairment. They may have congenital cataracts. Uh, they may have an optic nerve that is not fully developed or attached, or the myelin sheath has been damaged or is incomplete. So all of these early signs are clues to what's going on with the visual field and the visual uh, connections. Also, there are children and adults that if you give them a, a piece of notebook paper, eight and a half by 11, and ask them to draw on it, they may just draw on one corner. Well, we need to find out if that's the only quadrant that they can see in their eyes. So you have visual fields. You remember the optic chiasm comes and crosses, and it divides the retina into certain fields. This is also going to be covered. It's going to be very helpful for you. You can send your patient back for the optometrist, the developmental optometrist, uh, to further check and find out if they need prism glasses and so forth. Also, another thing that I'd like to throw in here is uh, torticollis can affect the visual field. If a child's torticollis is not resolved by about age two, two and a half, the visual field is fixed and they can walk around with their head erect. But if they want to run and kick a soccer ball, they may have to tilt their head so they can see the level landscape. It's going to affect fine motor skills, gross motor skills. If you have a child that um, is looking very closely at the paper, this is another clue that they're having uh, difficulty with vision. And I think we have a question, it's in Spanish, and I am very poor in foreign language. So if somebody could put that in English for me, I'll answer it. So you, you're also going to learn and replay in your mind what you probably learned in graduate school and in your therapy training about the brain visual pathways. Just like I mentioned, if there is any pathway that is interrupted damaged, you're going to have different effects on what the patient sees. And all of it is treatable. Um, I had a baby that was born with micro optic nerves and we added more fats to the diet. So it would uh, make more myelin sheath on the optic nerve. And when she went back to the pediatric neural ophthalmologist about eight months later, the uh, Physician said she can see the optic nerve is normal size. Her eyes are now working together, which before she didn't get any feedback and the eyes moved independently. So you'll learn some of those skills if you've attended some of my other classes. This class gives you the common sense approach. You have very few things you'll need to use. Most of the families you work with will have uh, things like toys that are red that have a bell in them because you want to wire vision to hearing to make the neuroplasticity connect and rewire. Now, when children or adults are learning to read or relearning to read, uh, they may have difficulty keeping their eyes focused. They may have double vision if their eyes do not converge and diverge. I have my patients and classes that I teach do visual tracking and have an object that goes up and down, side to side, and near and far. And those are the basic movements of the eye. And Sometimes children can't keep focus on the page. So when you're working with them, you want smooth movement of the eyes to where they can follow and process the information as it moves. Children with uh, high tone, if they're spastic or they have low tone, they may have a spastic eye muscle or a low tone uh, hypotonia in an eye muscle. 
We'll show you ways to increase the tone or decrease the tone to make it more typical or normal. The uh, eye muscles are striated just like the body muscles. If in here, I don't know if I can get this to play because it's a video. But anyway, be sure you uh, make all your activities fun, even for adults, because they will play longer than they'll work and you will keep their attention. When you sustain their attention, then they are going to uh, learn more in your sessions. And thank you so much for joining me today. I want you to really read over all the material that the Certified Functional Vision Rehab Specialist one of the courses is mine, and we try to make a course to where you can immediately implement all the information that is here.